This is hands down the best business book I've ever read. Look, I know you think it's ugly and I know you're probably thinking, did they use Microsoft Paint to design the front cover? And they probably did. But that's besides the point. This isn't a design book. This is a business book. It's business. It's business time. And if you're looking for a business book, you'll not find a better one. But if you could get all the juicy information from the book without actually having to go to the hassle of reading. Fuck. And that's what this video intends to do. Leave all the fluff and just give you all of the valuable information in one single video. So if you don't want to, you don't have to read the book. I honestly think if you can't stick through a 15 minute video in order to get access to advice that will change you and change your business, then you're never gonna succeed anyway. So the intention of this book is to help any business owner or any aspiring business owner to finally stop treading water and actually make real money. And Alex Hormozy says that all of business success boils down to the right product with the right offer delivered to the right group of people at the right price. And the book addresses each of these four problem statements so that you have the tools to navigate them. Alex first talks about your offering, what he calls a grand slam offer. And a grand slam offer is an offer so ridiculously good that pulls you away from being a commodity and turns you into a differentiated product, which subsequently allows you to charge more for your product. You see, if all products are equal, then the cheapest one becomes the most valuable by default. Take something like Heinz ketchup. If tomorrow Heinz were to 10x the price of their product, you would just find a different ketchup to put on your burgers and chips. Why is this the case? Because ketchup is a commodity. Anyone can sell it and there isn't a single ketchup brand that is differentiated from the rest. If your product or service is like every other product or service, then you are a commodity and you will have to price low in order to get customers. This puts you in a vicious cycle of ever shrinking profit margins, which will ultimately mean that ads become too expensive expensive for you to purchase. And without the ability to grow your business, it will eventually die. If you move into the land of the differentiated, then people stop making price-based decisions and start making value-based decisions. A Porsche is a good example of a differentiated product. How do you know this? Because price sensitive people don't buy Porsches. Now, if Porsche decides to increase their prices tomorrow, they will still acquire customers because it's a value-based decision. Alex Hormozy describes a Grand Slam offer as something that cannot be compared to any other product on the market. Every Grand Slam offer possesses the following traits. An attractive promotion, an unmatchable value proposition, a premium price, and an unbeatable guarantee. In the book, Alex Hormozy then gives an example of two agencies. One agency has the standard offering. You pay us to work with you. We do the work, maybe you'll get results, maybe you won't, but we've been paid and that's all we care about. Where's all the risk sit? With you, the customer. Other agency uses a grand slam offer. You just cover the ad spend. I'll generate all the leads and work all of them for you. You only pay me if people show up, so there's absolutely no risk to you. And I guarantee that you'll get 20 people in the first month or your next month is free. I'll also give you daily sales coaching, tested scripts, tested price points, and offers to swipe and deploy. And because the second offer is significantly better than the first, the second agency will sign up significantly more people from their ads, even if they're charging significantly more. And because they're acquiring more customers for the same price whilst making more from every customer, this creates a positive upward cycle of being able to put more money toward ads and get more customers and put more money toward ads and get even more customers. And this is how you grow a business ridiculously fast. The only limiting factor here is your ability to fulfill the orders. Sounds like a pretty good problem to have. Next, Alex discusses the importance of finding the right market. One of the stories in the book is of a professor talking to his students and the professor says, if you were going to open up a hot dog stand and you could only have one advantage over your competitors, what would it be? The students shout out things like location, quality, low pricing, bestie's fruit, hot star. They eventually run out of answers and the room falls quiet. The professor smiles and replies, it's a starving crowd. You could have the worst hot dogs at terrible prices, but if you're the only hot dog stand around and you're right outside a football stadium when a game takes place, without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to sell out. 
The point being, if there's a ton of demand for the solution you provide, you can do absolutely everything wrong and still make money. And this is why it's so important to choose the right market, because if you do, everything else becomes significantly easier. The analogy I like to use is that if there's enough fish where you're fishing, you don't need skill, you just need a bucket. All right, enough with the analogies. What's the actual point? The point is you need to position yourself in a market with high demand, but very few solutions. Alex looks for four indicators when picking markets. Number one, pain. The degree of pain will be proportional to the amount that you can charge. Number two, purchasing power. This might sound obvious, but your audience has to actually be able to afford the service that you're providing. If they can't, then you'll never have a successful business. A good example of this is I'm very good at negotiating my salary and I've helped a number of friends increase their salary by between 10 to 50K with my negotiation tips. And they all advised me to start a business on it. So I started putting the feelers out. I started asking people that were unemployed if they'd pay to work with me. And I was thinking, you know, I'm going to make them 20K, 30K. So I'll charge them 1K for this with a guarantee. But they were unemployed, right? So they'd go, dude, I'm unemployed. I have no money. I can't pay you a grand. And so ultimately, even though it was a great service and my audience really wanted it, they couldn't pay me what I was worth. And so it would never work. Number three, easy to target. You need to be able to get in touch with the people in your market if you're to market to them. If finding your ideal customer is like looking for a needle in a haystack, you're in the wrong market. And lastly, look for a growing market. As I'm sure you've heard before, a rising tide floats all boats. Next, Alex talks about the importance of niching down so much it scares you. In the book, he gives a bunch of examples of how you can charge a hundred times as much just by going from something extremely broad, like fitness plan that'll help you lose weight to fitness plan for female shift workers between the age of 25 and 40 with two kids. And he says the reason you can charge so much more is because you're speaking to a specific avatar. And when you speak to a specific avatar, it resonates in a way that it can't when you go broad. And when you resonate, you increase the perceived value. The next section is about charging so much it hurts. Everyone's scared to charge too much and not provide enough value to leave the customer disappointed. And this is a valid fear and one you should maintain, right? We should provide an exceptional service. We don't want to be frauds. But he gives a bunch of reasons why you shouldn't be afraid of increasing your prices. Number one, when you increase the price, you increase the customer's emotional investment. In explanation, they will do more. They will give more of themselves in order to see through your product or service, in order to make sure that it works for them. Number two, when you increase the price, you increase the perceived value of your product. And loads of studies back up what he's saying here. We often perceive the highest price thing as the most valuable thing, even if there's no evidence for that. Because there's too little time and too much information, we use signals or indicators of value in order to make buying decisions. And one indicator is price. We think, oh, if this is priced high, it must be better. I'm sure if you think back to the last time you were in the supermarket and you wanted to splash out a bit, treat someone with a fancy meal, you would automatically go for the one that cost more, even if you hadn't taste tested to see which was the better product. You'd just assume, oh, it costs more, so it's probably higher quality. And even when we go from a purchasing experience to a consuming experience, consuming a product or a service, this psychological effect is powerful enough to affect our senses, what we see, what we hear, what we feel, what we taste. And this is precisely why expensive wine tastes so good. Lastly, when you increase price, you attract the best customers and the best customers get the best results. You don't want to work with penny pinches. Oh yeah, like, could you tell me a little bit more about the program? Because, you know, if it's not what I think it is, I'm, I want a refund. They're the kind of people that will either not invest into the product because they're half-assing it, or they demand so much from you that working with them is a detriment to your business. You want to be so expensive that your customers think, ah, oh, this is so expensive that this must be different from everything else. They must be doing something different. There must be something behind it that is justifying this price. Next is one of my absolute favorite parts of the book. I think about this in my own business at least every week. It's really, really powerful. So make sure you're focused on this one, the value equation. So there's four parts to the value equation. The things above the divide sign are the things we want to 
increase, to boost, and the things below the divide sign are the things we want to minimize or get to zero. Let me explain each one for you. First, the dream outcome. The dream outcome is whatever your customer desires. Do they want a six pack? Do they want a beautiful woman at their side? Do they want to stop procrastinating? Do they want to make a million pounds a year? What is their desired outcome? The closer you can get to both delivering on and speaking to their desired outcome, the better your business will do. The next thing we're going to want to boost is the perceived likelihood of achievement. How likely is it that the customer will reach their desired outcome if they use your product? If the chances are low or if the customer perceives them to be low, they won't use your product. A good example of this is a diet plan versus liposuction. A diet plan has a perceived low likelihood of success because loads of people get on diet plans all the time and then eventually give up and wind up back where they were. However, with liposuction, you have an almost guaranteed result. Therefore, the perceived value increases. Now let's look at the two variables below the divide sign. The first being time delay. In almost all instances, people don't like waiting for things. There are exceptions, but we won't discuss those here. And if your product or service is in one of the many areas in which time delay is a bad thing, you're going to want to reduce this down by as much as you possibly can. To go back to the diet plan, something like that might take six months, a year, two years in order for the person to achieve their desired outcome. If you can get that down to four weeks or two weeks or instantaneous, your product becomes significantly more valuable. Once again, let's look at the diet plan versus liposuction. The liposuction takes a couple of hours and then you have the body that you want. Whereas the liposuction gives you your desired outcome in a few hours. And this is just another reason why liposuction costs so much more than a diet plan does. Lastly, effort and sacrifice. People don't really want to put in effort and they don't really want to sacrifice very much at all. And if your product requires them to put in a huge amount of effort and sacrifice a great deal, you're not going to sell anything. One final time, let's talk about the diet plan. When you hear diet plan, what do you think? You think effort and sacrifice for a long time. It's going to be a slog. We're going to have to eat salads and we're going to have to eat broccoli and we're going to have to eat spinach and we're going to have to starve ourselves for six to 10 hours a day. And we're going to be angry and we're never going to be able to eat the foods that we actually love. And so we probably won't hang out with our friends. Compare this one last time to liposuction. What's the sacrifice? You go in for a few hours, you come out and you're skinny. Sure, you have to go under surgery and that is an effort and sacrifice, but it's in a completely different league to the diet plan. And therefore, when you account for all of these things, liposuction is a factor of 10 or 100 times more expensive than the diet plan and always will be. So what we want to do is make our product and our offering so bloody good that it fills the dream outcome, has an extremely high perceived likelihood of achievement, has low or no time delay, and requires very little effort or sacrifice. In order to do this, what Alex suggests is adding in absolutely everything you possibly can. Even the super manual, high effort, low reward stuff, just add in absolutely everything that you can think of that you could possibly do to increase the perceived value. One way to do it is to just give out diet plans. A better way is to say, we're gonna head to the supermarket and we're gonna pick up your weekly shopping every single week together. If you want to eat out and you're not really sure where to eat out or what things to order off the menu, I'll come with you. All you have to do is text me. I'll be right there. You can text me at any time of day. You can call me at any time of day. I'm going to train with you six times a week. I'm going to cook all your meals for you. I'm going to do your dishes. I'm going to pleasure you in the bedroom. I'm just joking on the last one, but you get the point. You can create a massive offer stack so that it becomes unreasonable for people to not want what you offer. When you hear this, you're probably thinking, well, that's going to be an awful lot of effort for me. I'm not going to be able to work with very many customers whatsoever. And that is true. What Alex suggests here is that you create flow, monetize that flow, and then add friction. So don't try and reduce it by too much yet. First, create a new offer that's unbelievably good, even if it's hard to fulfill, and then get as many customers as you possibly can fulfill your offering for. Then try and identify ways in which you can automate or delegate or create little sheets or tools and just make it so that you aren't involved in the process anymore, but the customer still gets the same exact value just delivered in a slightly different way. 
and why does he recommend that you offer as much as you possibly can to begin with? Because if you can't get people buying, you'll never actually know if your idea is actually any good. Quote Alex Hormozzi, I'd rather do more for every customer and have cash flow coming in than optimize my business, but have zero cash flow coming in and zero idea what I need to adjust to better serve my customers. To summarize, worry about optimization and efficiency later down the line once you have cash flow. Once you have a super long list of potential solutions, you can then narrow it down a bit by removing the ones that are high cost for you and low value for the customer and the ones that are low cost for you and low value for the customer. What remains is your offering. And because the offering and the product are mirrors of each other, you now basically know what your product is and what your offering is. And we've already discussed pricing. You need to price this so high that it's uncomfortable. Remember, you're not a commodity anymore because you value stacked in your offering. You're completely differentiated. And when you're differentiated, there are no price comparisons. Your potential customers aren't going to look at some other company and go, oh, well, that's cheaper. If they're still doing that, you're still a commodity. So you need to continue to work on your offering. And there you have it. You now have the right product and the right offering targeting the right market for the right price. Please don't sleep on these ideas. Take them away and apply them immediately. The biggest takeaway tip I have is to take the value equation and start applying it to absolutely everything you do. How can I align my product with the customer's dream outcome? How can I increase the perceived likelihood of achievement through testimonials, through more manual intervention, through higher perceived expertise? And how do I make it so that the customer doesn't have to wait very long at all until they get value? For some products and services, this is quite hard. Take losing weight. It's impossible to get someone to lose 100 pounds in a week without doing some really unhealthy stuff. But maybe you can give them a quick win. Maybe get them to do something that you wouldn't want them to do over the long term, but that in the short term gets them to have a quick win and therefore makes them more likely to stick with it and perceive your product as valuable. And lastly, think about what you can do, how you can take the brunt of the effort and the sacrifice so that the customer doesn't have to do it and just keep cycling through. And as you continue to do this process week after week, you'll be surprised to find that there's always stuff you can improve on. If you found this valuable, please like and subscribe 